welcome to Emily Kate Made This. I am Emily Kate and I'm coming to you from Berlin in Germany. So it's been a while. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll know that I got struck down by um, the plague, by um, bacterial tonsillitis and some additional disgusting gross things in my mouth. So I have this feeling I'm a little bit like one of those old people that when you say, how are you? They tell you all the nitty gritty details. And I'm trying my hardest not to tell you because it's pretty gross. But basically for the last like 10, 12, mm, roughly two weeks, um, I basically didn't feel well at all. I haven't been able to eat anything except liquids like soups and tea. I'm on day 10 of antibiotics today, so fingers crossed that tomorrow I will be cured and uh, everything will be fine and I won't get it back again because that was the most horrendous two weeks of my life. I've been blessed with good health and um, that was not a welcome experience, but I won't blab on anymore about that. But thank you everyone who messaged me on Instagram saying to get better and checking up on me. It really meant a lot to me. So let's get on to the episode. Um, I want to just start off by saying that I'm going to talk about some sewing as well. So if you're not interested in sewing, you're just here for the knitting. This is a knitting podcast, by the way. Um, I'm going to add chapters down below so you can skip ahead to anything you're not particularly interested in. But hopefully you are, because I made this as well. So this is my Hinterland dress. Uh, sorry, I can't get a full shot of it. It basically ties up at the back. Um, you can make this in multiple ways. You can make it with a placket at the top, a placket all the way down, just a placket on the bottom. Um, but I just went for the tie at the back because I wanted just to check the fit. And funnily enough, <laughs> I made this dress in the smallest size because that's what my measurements suggested I should make. And when I finished it and put it on, it was so tight. And I also put that on Instagram asking like, why? <laughs> what do we do? Because it kind of, it fits everywhere. It's just, it's pretty tight here. Um, Especially if I bend like this, um, it's all like this, the whole dress starts riding up. But then I finished this on the Thursday and I wanted to film for you guys on the Friday and I wanted this finished, but I was just dying and I didn't know what was wrong at the time. I couldn't concentrate, I was so tired, um, so I managed to finish it and then it got abandoned. But I did try it on and it was really tight and I've been trying to look up how to fix it. But uh, since I haven't been eating anything for like a week and a half or so that's solid, I've lost about a kilogram. So now my dress fits <laughs> for like a week probably because I'm going to start eating again um, now. So I'll probably run back straight into the situation I was in. So if there are any sewists out there can you please help? What is it that I need to do in order to fix this situation? I, I don't know if I need to add fabric, decrease fabric. It's basically here. I think if I could just get this sorted, then the rest would fit. But anyway, here it is. And sorry about the light. It's Berlin, so it's winter. There's no light. I have, I've purchased a new lamp, you can't see it, but it's there. Um, so I have a new lamp, I have this lamp on over here, so the light's a little bit weird, but hopefully you can see. So it's got this cute little bee fabric, they're so adorable. And it's kind of a gathered waist, little ties, and I went for the longest sleeve option to make it, I mean I'm making it a winter dress, but it's cotton, so it's not exactly a winter dress. <laughs> but I uh, thought I'd go for a change instead of my usual um, no sleeves or little short ones. 
And what else about this? Um, it's size zero. Oh, and it is by So Liberated. That is who it's by. And I made the, the version that hits just above my knee. You can make it any length, but I went with that one. And so that's my sewing finished object and what I'm wearing. And then my knitted finished object and what I was supposed to be wearing. <laughs> I'll put it on for you. Although to be honest, I can never tell which way is the right way around. <laughs> this has been a uh, traumatic. I've gone through many uh, traumas with this. But this is my tulip. Is it tulip sweater or tulip pullover? Um, yeah, this light is not fantastic. But this is the tulip pullover or tulip sweater by Melody Hoffman. And although I love it, I'm also a bit disappointed in some areas, but it's completely my fault. It's basically knitted in two strands of Plutalopi and one strand of mohair. Somebody, somebody forgot about the mohair and they just went ahead and started knitting and then it, it looked a little bit big around the neck but I just went with it and, it, and I, I think the problem is I mixed it up with the new pattern that I wanted to get which is the um, Wild Posy jump on and I checked that one, it was two strands of Plutalope so I was like cool, that's fine, that's what I have, went ahead but this one has two strands of Plutalope and mohair which I forgot. So the gauge is a little bit off, so it, it's a bit big, but it's fine. The neckline is an issue for me because it's so wide, but I think there's two problems here. The first one being that yeah, it should have had more hair, so then it would have been smaller. The second is I just, I can't do ribbing with my Norwegian purling. It's making all the ribbing so huge. And that is the issue on the bottom. <laughs> I mean, I was also sick. I couldn't knit for the whole week. And when I did, I um, started on this section. And look at the size of those stitches. They're enormous. And this is knitted on five millimeter. This is knitted on four millimeter. And <laughs> they're huge. So, I'm, I'm trying to see it as like a creative, unique element to my piece, but it, it did go a bit wrong. I, I would have actually expected that with the amount of pain that I was in, that my stitches would have been really tight, but actually they're super loose. So for my cuffs, I went down to a 3.75 um, to try and make them a little bit less massive, but they're still huge in comparison. I have this horrible feeling I'm going to need to do English style knitting and purling for rib and then go back to Norwegian for the normal stitches because this is getting ridiculous. <laughs> I'm trying to make some socks and they're like this big at the, at the words. I haven't spoken in so long. I just got my voice back two days ago. So <laughs> yes, basically. The ribbing is a situation I need to tackle. But the colour is beautiful. I love the colour. I love the feeling of the yarn. I wasn't a huge fan of knitting with the yarn. I'll actually grab it for you because it's just there. So this is obviously a lot smaller now. They come in bigger plates and I had Two, and I just pulled from one of each and it's unspun and I'm sure you've seen it a hundred times because everybody uses this or the Newton and they basically they pull apart without any pressure and that happened to me multiple times and I've watched so many people on here go it's really easy you just get the two and you rub them together and they go back as one I don't know if I have just tiny hands or no pressure or what I'm doing, but I rub them together and nothing happens. 
So I had a little shot glass. It looked like I was drinking vodka, but I had a shot glass of water and I was sprinkling it and trying to rub it together, but it wasn't easy to knit with. It wasn't really hard, but it wasn't easy. But I have another two sweater projects to use for the other two colours, so maybe by the end of the third I'll be a master at Glutalope. But it's nice and it, it does smell a bit funny. It doesn't smell like sheep, but it smells strange. It's not a pleasant smell. Um, I personally don't find Letlope or Plutalope particularly scratchy. Like, I wear this over a, well, I want to say a vest, but I don't really mean a vest. Basically, it touches my skin and it doesn't, I don't have a problem. Um, what else? Oh, the sleeves. This is why I didn't knit for a week and I knew I shouldn't have started when I couldn't concentrate on anything. But I, I did. And I, I did the start of the sleeves and I just started knitting. Didn't look at the pattern and I am a, I'm someone that generally religiously stares at the pattern to make sure that they haven't missed anything. And I just picked up the stitches and just started knitting. And it wasn't until I was about 20 rows down I realised that you're supposed to start decreasing every eight rows. I wasn't going to rip back, so I then started decreasing, and then I looked at it and thought, oh, that is a massive sleeve, because like, of all this fabric. And I panicked, so I like, I'll do rapid decreases. So I quickly did a rapid decrease, and it stopped here. And I thought, now, now I've made my sleeves too short, it's fine, I need to do a rib section. It'll be fine. And I did the ribbing and then it finished here. <laughs> so I actually don't like really long ribs as a general look on a garment. And also I, I don't enjoy doing it. So I managed to do <laughs> the uh, sleeves a bit too short. But it's fine because in general, I prefer shorter sleeves. It's just, I would have maybe liked another inch of fabric. But what are you gonna do? It's fine. It's a bit of a strange construction now that it um, ends so abruptly here and then joins, but I, yeah, as I said, mixed feelings, I, I love it. But then I'm also, I'm so aware of all the things that I didn't do properly or correctly that, um, correct. Oh, why do I never know this? grammar that I did correct, that I did correctly. Mm. So yeah, nice colour, kind of fits. <laughs> I, I don't know, I think it's because I was going down with the bug that I uh, struggled so much, but I think if I did it again, it wouldn't be as complicated. I just found everything such a struggle. And then I realised why, and then I didn't touch it, and then I did, and yeah. Gosh, I'm blabbing. Let's have a tea break. So, the other part that I forgot to mention. This is my first tubular cast on. I followed Andrea Mowry's um, YouTube to explain how to do it. So it wasn't as hard as I expected. I thought it was going to be really bad because people say, oh, it takes so much work, but then you eventually get a nice result. I actually, <laughs> I don't see a difference. I, I have this feeling I'm missing something here because people always talk about how marvelous tubular casts on, cast ons are, but I really, it's just a cast on. It's just, I don't know, but it's there. So, I did it. What else? Oh, and the scalloped edge. You um, may have seen this already because I did my Christmas jumper and I uh, did the scalloped edge on that one. If you haven't seen that, that's my last video where I talk about my epic Christmas jumper. So go check that out if you're interested. And uh, yeah, I made it really cropped so that it would fit with dresses. And um, I always say high-waisted jeans and it wasn't until I started recording um, two, three months ago that I actually didn't own any um, high-waisted jeans. <laughs> I always talked about the crop jumpers being for that purpose, but 
never actually did it. I always thought, I really need to get some. I really should get some. So now I have some. <laughs> Wonderful, interesting story. Um, so did I cover everything? Ribbing, sleeves, gauge, mohair, drutalopi, all good. So the next thing are more finished objects. So obviously it's been a while, you'd think I would have done multiples of multiples of um, finished objects by now, but no. This one, this one, and where are they? My husband's Christmas socks. So I feel like everything I'm starting off with is well, so, hmm. But here's another. Mm. These are supposed to be, and I'll try and insert a picture, these really nice Christmas socks from Arnie and Carlos. I think it's Regia. Anything I talk about, I'll um, link below. But they came out completely different, and I showed it on Instagram, and I also saw, and I cannot remember her Instagram handle, but I love her page. She has some beautiful, beautiful knitwear, and she has these jumpers with foxes and mushrooms and oh, I cannot wait until she's released them. Anyway, if I remember her name, I'll insert it here. But she just made some socks and mittens and it looks exactly the same as these socks. But these socks are supposed to look completely different. So here they are. I'll try and hide my face. They're double knit or six ply. And it's two. But they just, they don't look like the picture at all. And I'm sure my husband won't mind because he doesn't know what they're supposed to look like. But I, I, I spent weeks trying to find this exact yarn because I could only find it in four ply. And since my gauge has gone mad, like crazy, with it's just huge now. It's so loose, I don't know what has happened. But anyway, basically I enjoy making six ply socks because I don't have to use like 1.25 or 2 millimeter needles because I used to use 2.5 and now everything comes out enormous but yeah they basically didn't come out as I expected I'm happy I can show these to you now because they've been sitting under this table for th three weeks and I haven't been able to wrap them because I wanted to show you <laughs> so I can finally wrap them and we're putting up the Christmas tree today so they can go under the tree. But let me try and put them on. The pattern I used is the biscuit sock pattern that I did before, but I just did the numbers. Uh, I didn't do the little pearl bumps that is the characteristic feature of biscuit socks. But I just wanted the um, numbers and the heels. But I didn't do the same toe, I used a kitchener stitch toe because my husband didn't like the... I don't know what it's called, but you basically decrease and then pull it like you would with a hat. So it has a little, like a little nipple at the end that you pull and then sew in. Um, so I changed that for his socks. And then I had some leftovers, so I made some shorties. Not really short short, they came to about here uh, for my mum and I sent them in the uh, Christmas box that I posted. So she got hers, uh, which was a nice little surprise for her. Uh, I, I showed her these and she went, wow, I love them. They're really nice. So that's a danger. If someone says to me they love something, I'm like, oh, that's good. I'll make it for them. <laughs> so never tell me you like something if you don't, because you'll probably receive it. And on the subject of the biscuit socks, I had a little run-in with the yarn. So if you recall, I talked about these couple, I don't know which episode, but these are the biscuit socks. And they're made in Onion Knits DK Superwash yarn. That is the key word here, Superwash. It does say, they should be washed on 20 degrees and 
I, to be honest, I don't know if I accidentally put them in the wash or if I thought I'll put them in a cold wash because they're super wash. But regardless, they went in a little um, net bag, laundry bag, alone on a cold wash with I think maybe some of my handmade dresses because I tend to wash them on a cold wash. I don't know why. <laughs> and they came out solid, completely hard and tiny. And I panicked and I grabbed them and I pulled them over onto my feet as hard as I could to get them on and squished them into shape on my feet and wore them until they took on my sh foot shape. But they're super wash and I washed them on cold. So has anyone else experienced this? What, what did I do? <laughs> I've been washing superwash socks for multiple years because my mum's been making me socks for years and I never cared at the time, like 15, 10, 15 years, I've just been throwing them in any wash that I was doing. Cold, warm, no wool wash, and they've all survived. Except these. And I haven't actually put them on since it happened, which again is about three weeks, because I wanted to show you. Um, so I don't know now if I put them on how much stretch, but basically, oh, this light is terrible. Basically, they're really stiff now, like the, there's not any difference between the ribbing and the rest of it. I'm pretty sad because I really like these and I don't know if I can wear them now. So has anyone else experienced this? Is this just normal for this yarn? I don't know. But yeah, sad story. I will try and wear them and see what happens. But I'm, yeah, I'm sad. But on to happier things. Let's talk happier things. Works in progress. So just a little bit, this is my third, and I'm sure that most of you are like, ugh, not another ranculus, so apologies, but here's another YouTube podcast for talking about her ranculus. This is how far we're going along. I've just split, so you can't even see it, this is terrible podcast to etiquette. Here are my separated sleeves. So, yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know how I'm showing this to you. Basically, there's my ranculus. It's just the body and some uh, three quarter length sleeves to go. I'm using stash, old stash, like original yarn to enter my life, which is Drops Nord because my mum got given some and then I just started knitting so she said here have this do something with it and for another day I will show you what I did and then it all went wrong and then dramas unfolded and um, it's been abandoned so I thought I'm gonna use this yarn because it's alpaca and it's soft and it's sitting there doing nothing and I wanted to use it so I bought some mohair and it's the first time I've ever used mohair which is amusing because it should have been the second time because I should have used it for this but nonetheless these two together because this is a sport so I was kind of hoping it would add up to like a DK but I'm completely baffled please help me here when you mix a sport and mohair what do you get? Do you get DK? Do you get Aaron? Worsted? I don't know. <laughs> the pattern says, I think it's just one strand of mohair, but usually people mix fingering and mohair together. But this is sport and I thought, eh, it'll be fine. And I think it is. We shall see when I try it on. I, I did get in a bit of a pickle because my other two that I've made, one is a DK yarn and it was just one strand, wasn't really thinking about it, I just knitted it. I don't have a clue what size needles, I never wrote it down, 
I'm cursing myself for this because I really love that junk bomb. I think I talked about it in episode 4 or something. It's a rusty orangey brown and it's probably in a video picture uh, thumbnail. And I also did it in a cotton linen combination in a pink colour. And again, didn't write it down. Didn't write down what I used, what needles. So when I picked this up, I thought, I know, I'll do about a 4.5 for the neck and it'll be tight and it'll be marvellous. It came out the size of a sock. I had a cast it on, tubular cast on, again, and then it was like this big, like tiny, and I thought it's never gonna stretch enough to go over my head. I can't, I can't do that. So I went up to a five, and then I messed up the tubular on the very last stitch. It fell off and unraveled. <laughs> So I had to undo it, but then I did it again, and then I looked at it and thought it's still too small. So then I just went with a six, because that's what the pattern said. So went with a six, seemed fine, but it didn't look like enough stitches. And I saw that people had said they cast on something like, I don't know, 90 or 100 instead of the recommended amount. So I did that, but then it looked too big, and yeah. <laughs> so cast on the right amount. Use the right needle size in the pattern. Shockingly enough, it worked. So I'm still using six. I don't like that it's so um, gappy because I'm worried it's going to just stretch out like this. But if I did it any smaller, it wouldn't go over my head. So what are you going to do? But I think it'll be nice. It's not generally the colour I would wear. I'm more of a green, pink, navy blue, which is strange. I would never have thought I liked blue, but I have a lot of blue things. But this colour is not something I would gravitate towards, but I hope that when it's finished, it will be nice. It was very strange ordering this, because I don't look at that colour and go, oh, wow. It arrived and I was like, <laughs> but it, it looks nice. I like rusty colours more. But I'm hoping it'll look nice with something that I own. <laughs> um, but it's it's nice to knit on. It's my first time using mohair. It's a little bit strange going from um, Plutolope, which is really like, stiff and rustic and kind of scratchy when you're knitting with it, and obviously pulling apart, and then to going to mohair and alpaca, which is super soft. <laughs> it's a very strange experience. But I'm looking forward to the end result, which will hopefully be soon, because ranunculi, ranunculuses, don't tend to take too long to make. This one is day three, I think. Maybe a bit, maybe four. Um, 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 um. And, oh, the mohair, did I say that? Tilia. Um, what else? Uh, oh, I have one thing I wanted to show you because I'm giving it away and I wanted to um, tell you another tale of woe <laughs> because apparently I enjoy telling you everything that I go wrong on. <laughs> this is going to be donated to my friend's child um, for her Christmas and uh, she's three. <laughs> I made this for me. If... Mm, no, I don't think you'll see it. I wore this on Christmas Day last year. It was my Christmas jumper. And I was going full steam ahead trying to finish it for Christmas. I... Technically I did, but it wasn't until the evening that I finished it. And this was a bit of a disaster. So. This is a love note and I used a yarn that I was supposed to use for a friend. I wanted to make her a scarf in the leaf pattern that I've shown you a zillion times. I think my last episode I showed you the um, pink leaf jumper and it's that pattern but it was a scarf and I had only just learnt to knit 
and I could not handle this yarn. It is Concept Alpaca Silver. It was horrible <laughs> to knit with. Maybe now that I, like at the time I'd only knitted with cotton. This was the first time I used wool and it's not really wool because it's alpaca and some glittery, I don't know if you'll see it, it does kind of like sparkle. Yeah, not loving this light situation here. Maybe I can add some b-roll. Anyway, it was awful to knit with and uh, I couldn't turn it into the scarf. So I thought, I'll go on Ravelry and I looked up this yarn and searched for any pattern that used it that I liked and I came across the love note and I thought that is a beautiful pattern. I had no idea that it was like doing the rounds on Instagram and YouTube. Bought it, made it, didn't understand how much longer my torso actually is. I heard that alpaca was really stretchy so it would get um, really big. So I thought after I finished, ah, it's fine, it's gonna get much bigger, especially after blocking. It did not change in the slightest, not an incy wincy bit more. My voice is going again now. <clears throat> so it's basically a boob warmer. When I wear it, it just <sighs> sits here, nice little bra, and it's warm and it's a gorgeous colour. And when it's actually on, I'm going to cons consistently stand here and try to show you, but it really doesn't want to be. It has this gorgeous pattern. I have worn a cotton linen version on the podcast, I think episode two, two or three. And I love it. And I want to make another one because I have to give this away because I can't wear it. The sleeves are tiny. Also, I was really struggling with the needles that I had and I wanted shorter, um, smaller circumference to do the sleeves because at the time I was struggling with Magic Loop and on Boxing Day, so the 24th, they arrived and I ripped out the needle I was using, put in the circular and went down and <laughs> as you'll see, here is one sleeve and then the next one just like expanded my gauge completely changed so one sleeve goes like this and the other sleeve <laughs> opens out like this it's yeah um, i mean it's nice but hopefully a three-year-old won't be as um annoyed by the sleeves and hopefully she doesn't completely destroy it either <laughs> but that will be her christmas jumper and i think it's going to be so cute to see her in the same jumper that I wore last year <laughs> and I shall make a new one. So that is the first and last time you will see this even though you probably didn't particularly see it because the light is so terrible. Okay how much I have not that much space on my hard drive so and my voice is disappearing so let's whiz through. Um, I wanted to do a quick acquisitions talk but I'm not going to take everything out to show you but it just kind of makes a bit more sense if I talk about them. Um, I got some more Plutolopi because I'm going to make the Melody Hoffman Wild Posy jumper, pullover, sweater <laughs> and that came in the post and a green one which I'm going to possibly either, actually you guys can help me here, do I make another Felix or do I do a cross? I was thinking maybe a cross between the Felix and the Tulip. So that the Felix, I think I showed you two episodes ago, they have the, I did have it next to me, basically where the raglans are you have these holes, eyelets, and I've seen some people combine these two patterns together and I really like it. So I might do that. Or if you order, if you buy the uh, Melody Hoffman Wild Posy Jumper pattern, it actually comes with two. So there's one called Flora and it has lace inserts, inserts, lace eyelets in the pattern. But she also has more of a textured one without lace. 
of Luna. So I might use it for that. I'm not sure. So that was one acquisition. And I got, uh, what was it? The day that I think I got sick was a day we went out to a restaurant to celebrate our third wedding, wedding anniversary. I'll see if I can get a picture of our wedding. Um, yeah, we basically went to this Russian restaurant because my husband is Russian and it's a good excuse to eat some food that I'm terrible at trying to recreate. And it was super busy. And we sat there and we thought, mm, this is a terrible idea. We haven't, we've gone out. We went out in the summer, but we literally went to the building, bought said item and left. We didn't sit inside. We didn't sit inside a restaurant or enclosed space. And yeah, it was really busy. The tables were rammed together. And uh, three days later, someone went down with the lug. So, but on a positive note, I got presents because it was my wedding anniversary. And I'm gonna get it because I left it down there. Because this is, I was going to say it's my next project, but that's probably too to um oh I've lost words not gonna happen <laughs> I got this book and after I made the Maya cardigan by Helena Magnuson I loved her pattern so much that I searched for her and I found that she did this book and it has some like so cute such cute patterns it's a very interesting uh, <laughs> informational pieces inside it's basically i didn't realize this but it's knitwear that designs based on 19th and 20th century icelandic historical like, garments so not just garments but like accessories hats mittens shoes i mean they didn't have shoes so they had these like knitted inserts and then like fish shoes I know, I'm not doing a terrible, I'm not doing a terrible, no I am, I'm doing a terrible job at explaining. But I want to make these so badly. Where are you? I just saw you. Let's see if I can even get a good picture. How cute are they? So I think the originals are the ones there. And then this side are the knitted versions. Hopefully I didn't just show anything I shouldn't have there. Whoops. There we go. So I'm really excited. Icelandic soft shoes. And it has a bunch of patterns. So there's some um, socks, mittens, hats. And they're all based on pieces that are in the Icelandic like historical museum for textiles. Uh, I should have been more organized and found this ahead of time. I get quite frustrated when people do this and now I'm doing it. Look, a knitted skirt. Oh my God. And it's made in Pluptolopi. <laughs> so I'm set for life with this book. I've got hats, mittens, scarves, shoes, shawls. I'm a happy lady. So this was my wedding anniversary gift and I would like to start knitting on this but I've got so many patterns that uh, I have already got lined up. Like I've got my ranunculus, I've got Christmas socks, I've got the uh, Melody Hoffman jumper and I also joined a, a mystery knit along which is by A Crafter's Tale. Her name is Nina but I cannot remember her surname. She lives in Sweden so I believe she's originally from um, Germany and she has such a nice podcast it's really like calm it's really calming to watch and I love everything that she knits. And last year she did a knit along for these mittens and they're beautiful. 
and I really want to knit them but they use three colors at once and I have been oh I have been <laughs> going insane trying to do three colors in my um, jumper my vin vintage Zorn jumper oh the rage is real I I've left it in the basket for the last month because three colours are not my fan. Like, I'm not a fan of <laughs> So the idea of doing them in mittens, basically the whole section, I, I'm not keen. I know that this uh, mystery knit along, there is a section, she said there's about six, six rows that have three colours. So I'm hoping, <laughs> I'm hoping the rage doesn't take control and uh, I'll be able to do that. I, I signed up for it, I bought it, you buy the pattern and then every advent, so the four advent days, Sundays, you get the next installation. So I ordered the yarn yesterday so I'm hoping that arrives because I want to get started on it. I know I'm going to be behind but I don't care. I really wanted to join it and because I was sick I just didn't look at my phone really, I didn't like watch YouTubes, I just like sat here dying. So, so dramatic. So I am hopefully going to cast that. So new year, in the new year I will look at my new book. And two more things. I got this one, I ordered this January I think and I ordered it to my parents in the UK thinking my mum would visit at some point the, during the year or I would and of course, we didn't. There's lots of dramas and reasons behind it. I know people have been travelling, but I didn't get my residency permit uh, to live in Germany until um, October. No, November. I didn't get it until November. So I couldn't really leave. She couldn't come here. Anyway, she posted it. And it's super heavy. But I am so excited for this book. It has knitting and crochet and uh, patchwork. I can never pronounce this. Macrame, macrame, um, and embroidery techniques. And oh, I'm so excited. I, I mean, I don't have any more time for any more hobbies because I have so many. <laughs> but I really, I would really like to do more. And this book is full of so many amazing things. It was printed before I was born and it's in perfect condition. So there's another acquisition. I think I saw it on the Woolly Mammoth podcast, like one of her very first episodes. I think it was her that she mentioned it briefly and I screenshot it and um, then at some point I bought it. Oh, I'm so excited. That's that. And my final um, acquisition is this. It's very small, but it's amazing. I have been struggling to get my interchangeable needles to stay together. I go around and then they... <sighs> Interruption. <laughs> so, where was I? My little heart. Basically, when I have my interchangeable needles, when I, especially my number three, for some reason, the three millimeter, when I'm knitting, they just start to unscrew and it was driving me insane. And even though I have these little T-pins that you're supposed to use to keep them tight, they weren't. So I found these little rubber Chiaogu things <laughs> that you use and you hold, they're grippy and you twist. Game changer. Highly recommend if you're having the same issue because I lost several stitches multiple times because it would just undo. Excellent acquisition. Um, anything else? Um, well, yeah, my lamp. And I also bought a tripod so you're a bit higher up so I can move you around instead of balancing you precariously on my desk. That was another one. Um, yeah, <laughs> that is all my acquisitions. So. A tinly bit of life stuff because I haven't obviously been doing anything but I I am um, I did write some notes down when I thought I was gonna record two weeks ago one week I don't know last time 
and uh, they made me laugh because I wanted to talk about it and then obviously now the time has passed, it doesn't, it's not really relevant, but it amused me. So I have to tell you, I'm even going to get a little bit more comfy. So I was going through my hard drive because I, since I've been recording, it takes up so much space on your computer. <laughs> so anyone who wants to uh, do a YouTube podcast, you need space on your computer and a hard drive and you need to um, back everything up. And uh, I wanted to go through my pictures and stuff and delete stuff I didn't need, but naturally I went down a rabbit hole of memories and like, oh, do you remember that? Oh, isn't that nice? So I found my folder for when I lived in New Zealand and I lived there 10, 11 years ago and I lived in Auckland and I used to work in a fruit and vegetable market slash smoothie juice bar and I was working with a guy called Cameron Jones and he was an actor in the equivalent of like Neighbours or EastEnders I guess but the New Zealand version in Shortland Street and he was so excited to be like branching out into the world of acting and so he was there and I heard this voice and I knew this voice but I I thought it can't be because that's a bit cliche to be in New Zealand and then hear the voice of the Flight of the Concords guys. So I'll insert a picture, but I was so excited because I used to watch Flight of the Concords all the time, especially when I lived there. And um, yeah, I, I've just completely forgotten his name, Jerome, Geno Jero J yeah, Jerome Clement. And yeah, I made him a smoothie and I was very excited. And then I, th I think the next day, uh, Reese Darby was there. And I love Rhys Darby. He, if anyone hasn't seen Flight of the Concords, he is the New Zealander who's in Yes Man, who plays the boss of Jim Carrey. And he's also the guy in Jumanji who says, welcome to Jumanji. <laughs> yeah, love him. Then I found out that I actually lived one street over from him when I lived there. And so he was my neighbor, but I never really saw him. But he did come into the store and my colleagues knew that I liked him and uh, she saw him and she ran over to me as I was serving someone but I knew who I was serving because they had come in together and it was his wife and my colleague was there talking to me going oh my god Ray Star is there you love him you're, why aren't you reacting like you're obsessed with him like, okay and then she laughed being, thinking I was being rude and the his wife was like smirking and I was so embarrassed <laughs> like here are your vegetables thank you have a nice day I'm not obsessed with your husband and then just as um, she was gonna leave she had Reese Darby came up behind and took the bags and the smoothie and oh oh I was so embarrassed <laughs> And then I explained it to my friend, our colleague, and yeah, she was then mortified at what she'd done, what she'd said. Oh, my voice. So yeah, there's my little fun story of the day. Yeah, they were fun times. Oh, I'm sorry, voice. Um, yeah, other than that, I haven't done anything because I've just been here. Um, just making... Not really making much, <laughs> making my dress during my knitting. Today I'm going to be doing some Christmas decorating. Um, I really want to make more Christmas um, treats, but my, I've only just started eating solids yesterday. So I don't think my body's like, yeah, have some sweets and some sugary things, yeah. <laughs> because I, I couldn't eat because I had lots of um, blisters in my t on my tongue, on my gums. Um, anything that's soft flesh was covered in blisters and yeah my teeth were, my gums were bleeding and it was very horrible so I can eat solids now uh, I was a bit 
apprehensive on filming because I've still got some scars on my mouth from the blisters or ulcers but um, if I didn't film now I'd never film anything for like another two weeks so I'll get over it. Vanity is <laughs> not worth not recording for. Um, so let's finish there. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that the next video won't be so far away and I'm really hoping I get somewhere on my Christmas mitten mystery knit along so I can show you that. Um, I did think about doing vlogmas but actually I've never watched vlogmas. I'm not really sure what you're supposed to do and I don't really do anything that I think you'd be interested in seeing. But if I do, maybe I'll do a little film of baking or something, or something Christmas related. We'll see. I'm not fantastic at video editing because I still don't quite understand how to do it. Everyone I know uses the um, uh, Apple editing software and it's, like, it's not easy necessarily, but it's pretty easy. And I just don't have an Apple computer, don't know how to find a cheap, not cheap, how to find an easy editing program that I can use and understand. I'm using a much, far too complicated editing program that I'm just using the bare minimals of and I've just got my head around that so I'm just going to keep using it and we'll see what happens. <laughs> Maybe I can do some um, vlogmas. But I'm blabbing now and um, my flashcard memory thing is flashing at me so I will end it there. Um, if you want to find me elsewhere, I am on Instagram as Emily Kate Mapers, and I'm also on Ravelry. I'm not very good at keeping it up to date, but I will try. Um, um, and yeah, if you have any questions, any comments, um, leave them below. And if you liked this, please like and subscribe. It really helps um, boost my channel so other people can see it if they are also interested in knitting and sewing. So thank you again and I'll see you next time. Bye!